So, Paul, how are you doing? It's been a while since we've seen you out in, and about. Like when when you when when your social media stuff came in front of me, I'm like, now there's a guy I need to speak <laughs> you need to speak to. How are things? Everything's going good. I'm I moved out to Vegas. Hey, Nadine, how do you get this thing off of here? I can't see him. Hey, there you are. But um, everything's going good. I moved out to Vegas with my son. My son's fighting. And uh, just come out here, try to train, give back what I, what I, what I, what I, well, I mean, what I have. I mean, I spent my whole life, my whole life boxing. That's all I know. I mean, like, when I say that's all I know, that that's literally all I know. If, if me and you had, was driving in a car and we broke down, our tire got flat, well, guess what? We're booked. If you don't know how to fix the tire, we we're we're stuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because so. boxing's boxing's been the life. So the, so I mean, you messaged that obviously the other day. I mean, is it something that you still got a passion for, despite everything, the ups, the downs, and everything else? You still do you still love the game? I love I love the sport. I love I love the game. You know what I mean? I mean, with all my heart, I love it. I love what it creates. I love the discipline of it. The kid, the kids learning. I mean, you're able to change. You're lit it literally changed my life. Despite what I did to myself, and I only blame that on myself. Is boxing changed my life? If I wasn't a boxer, I'd be doing life in prison. Hey, you say uh, the stuff that you've done to yourself, but you haven't had a great hand in life, right? You've had a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. So it's yeah. not it's not necessarily all the stuff that you've you've done to yourself, but we'll come to that in a bit. Hey, um, obviously you were known for your tattoos back in the day. What was the last one that you had done? Uh, I put I put uh, my trainer PK, okay, on my face, and because because he, he's the one that made me, and I'm and, and I made him where it was like he's like my father, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so. that that was Charles, right? Yeah, Charles so, P.K. Pecor. Yeah, so he took you under his wing and convinced you to stop playing high school basketball, right? And told you yeah, uh, yeah. during the same conversation to drop out of school, right? And say, look, you're a fighter. Yeah, yeah I told him to come to my game. And um, he come to the game. I was a good point guard. I was from freshman playing point, uh, playing point guard. You know, I could dribble, I could shoot, I could do all that. But um, he seemed to think that I, I was wasting my time. And when he said that to me, I was like, hold up, man. What is he talking about? And then I just was like, he, he's right, I guess. I'm only, he said, how big are you going to be? Look at me. I'm only 145 pounds right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm only five. I'm like five, nine, five, seven at that, five, eight at that. You know what I mean? So it's like, he was right. So, I mean, I was going to say, what was your relationship like with Charles? But the fact you got a tattoo of him shows that you guys were tight. Were you always tight? Was that the way things always were? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, man. If PK would, if PK would have never passed away, like I got his hat right here. It's my, my man right here. Look, I got his hat, PK. People don't understand. That don't, they say, I, I, asked, I asked Rachel, his wife, I said, Rachel, when he passed away, I said, would you care if I call myself Pete? And, and they they took it and ran with the Pittsburgh kid. But the Pittsburgh kid's Billy Kahn, and everybody knows that. I'm Billy Kahn. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm PK, I'm Pete Bacor. I was, I, 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 that's, what I, that's what my nickname is. Uh, okay, so the Pittsburgh kid didn't, didn't necessarily come from where you were from, and, and obviously it wasn't a nod to... To grab it. it was your it was your it was your it was your respect to your coach yeah and you know and you know something like i was brought up in in pittsburgh in all the bad neighborhoods and i i had i had a big big following just because i went to stone i was i had a rough life i went to probably like 30 different different schools you know what i mean i, I i've been in a, many 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 street fights you know what i mean just being you know it's just being being that dude i guess being like you know yeah sure you had a you like you were known to have you know everyone who knew your story back in the day 
they knew that you had a hard childhood. So how how tough was it? How and how tough is Pittsburgh? I mean, when we hear of ghettos, um, maybe we think of New York and Cincinnati and other places. Pittsburgh, but... Pittsburgh is just a blue collar town, but like it's it, it's just it's just uh, how can I put it? It's a blue collar, tough town, you know. And um, I love man, I love Pittsburgh. But it brought it brought a lot of trouble into my life, you know what I mean? Because of the neighborhoods where I was at, and the like, I wasn't, you know, it's, you're going to. Well, I mean, I can tell you, I don't want to say crazy stuff, you know what I mean? But you know what I mean? There was some yeah. crazy stuff. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna fight. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna end up fighting, basically, when you you know what I mean. So when your when your parents divorced, you went and lived with your dad. Was he into boxing? And was that when you started fighting and stuff? My so father, in- always, my father was a boxer. Yeah, he he always had a heavy bag. You know what I mean? He hit. He always hit the heavy bag. But I didn't start boxing back then. <clears throat> I left. I went with my my um, mom when I was in when I was in fifth grade, and then I, and then I met I met a guy I met a guy named Head, and he took me down to um gym, and and I and I actually. Went to PK's gym. This is crazy. I went to PK's gym that they with my brother. And I was like, I started hitting the bag southpaw. I'm not a southpaw. I'm really right-handed. My brother's right-handed. He was fighting southpaw, and I wanted to be like my brother. He was my older brother. So the guy told me, you know, you're. Yeah. I said, no. And I was a street kid. You're telling me I can't do something. I'm not gonna listen to you. I wasn't gonna listen to you. So I went to, up to. I went up to the Hill District up, up in Jack's gym, started fighting. I, fought, I had one fight. I met PK at the fights. I told PK, this guy told me that I can't come to your gym because I wouldn't change up. Southpaw, he kicked that guy out of the gym. And, he, and, I, and me and PK became like this. Wow, that's interesting about the, your... So are, like, you right, so are you right-handed? Yeah, he said like this to me, check this out. He said, I've been waiting for a guy. This is honest to truth. This is probably after my like fifth fight. He said, I've been waiting for a kid like you to walk in my gym for 50 years. I thought, oh God, that's what he said to me. Yeah. So obviously, even though you had these scrapes in the street back in the day, you weren't like a, a super aggressive southpaw, though you could be, but you were obviously a pure boxer, right? You were a smooth, you were a smooth southpaw. So did that go I, against your instincts? Or did, you, you know, know what? Did, but you know what? Well, before when I was, I got shot when I was 16. I got shot in the leg when I was 16. And before that, I was, I was a real, real, really good body puncher. And, 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 and I'd be able to get, stop people. But when I got shot, I had to come up with a whole new different style where you actually had to be in, front, in the pocket, make them miss, make them, you know what I mean? I would be, I'd make you miss like by this much instead of running around and do all that crazy. I couldn't move my legs like that. I wasn't good on my legs like that. Um, tell me the story about how you being shot. Well, I was, I was <clears throat> with, with one of my friends and, um, it's, 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 and, uh, the cops p- put the lights on and we was in the car. The car wasn't even, it wasn't stolen. It was, a, it was his car. And, you know, we was drinking and we, I talk, I, I actually take the blame for it because I, I told him, go, let's go, let's go. And we, and we, we, we got into like a 10 minute high speed chase. We wrecked and the, and the cop came up to the car, broke the window with the um, gun and just started shooting in the car. So that's how he shot like three times in the car. So that's, and anybody hit me, the one hit me in my, in my leg. So, I'm guessing that during, even though you obviously high, your adrenaline's high and stuff, that still hurt like anything, right? Yeah. Where did you get shot? Whereabouts in the leg? And right in my um, right in my like this area, right there. Oh wow! So that's the bullet wound right in the shin. Yeah. Jeez, man. So, um, and so let's you had to. I want to tell you a story. So after this happened, right. <laughs> I come, I'm at the hospital. PK shows up at the hospital, right? He, he's like, did, did you get shot in your knee? I'm like, 
I didn't, I didn't know at the time. I, but he's asked the doctor, is he shot in his knees? I know he got shot in his shin. Oh, he'll be all right. <laughs> as long as it's not the knee. Yeah, I was cracking up. He gets funny. Never gave up on me, man. He never gave up on me. And then it became hard. Well, listen, and then it, he was Italian. You know what I'm saying? Italian, you know, a part of, you know what I'm saying? Pe pe people, people loved them there and stuff. And he, and, and he had, obviously he had a, a, a backing for me where I, I can get back, like where I can get like, um, uh, cause I, I didn't have no money. So sponsors need, and stuff. I didn't have no managers. I didn't have nothing. And, and it took me, when I got shot, I had to prove myself, you know what I mean? And then and the, uh, the Olympics was never, never something that I wanted to do. I always wanted to be a professional. And uh, I got on USA Tuesday Night Fights against a regular guy on the undercard of Camacho. And that, my, my, my friend from the um, neighborhood, my boy Darnell, he, he, if it wasn't for him, I would never get on TV. He paid for me and PK to go out there. You know what I mean? And uh, get on, get on TV. And when I got on TV, they, he got my man, my, he, I ended up with managers and they took care of me. And, and listen, they, I'm going to tell you like this, not everybody had a, I'm a, I can admit, not everybody had a, a upbringing. I don't even know if they, they could even have an upbringing like this anymore. Like the way I was fighting every single month because I had to, or, you know, my problems in, in the streets and stuff, you know what I mean? My, my uh, addiction in, in the streets. And I was into the alcohol, you know what I mean? I always drank alcohol, you understand what I'm saying? And boxing kept me away from that. Sure. Yeah, man. And, uh, you mentioned your brother uh, a little bit ago. So that was Harry, right? And he took, he was, you were going to the gym with him. Yeah. My brother was a good amateur, number three in the um, country. So I guess you did a lot of sparring with him, right? Or were you different yeah. weights? You, no, you, yeah. you guys fought. Yeah. I mean, we did a lot of box, we did a lot of boxing, but he would always, he'd always try to get down to the gym before me and steal my sparring. <laughs> What was it like with you and him? Did you guys, was it brotherly love or did you guys not hold back? No, brotherly love. Uh, he, he was a 156 pounder. He, he had a mean left hand. So I tried not to run into that. And so I, I'm, am I right in saying that your dad passed away from an overdose when you were real young, when you were nine? Yeah. Yeah. So two things. I mean, A, how hard, was, the first one, how hard was that to, to cope with at the I time? It's really hard because I went from I went from living in a neighborhood. My my dad was a crane operator, and remember the I don't know if you know for if you're not familiar with Pittsburgh, but it's the it's a steel mill town. And that when they had the steel mills in, so he was he had a good job and he was financially okay. He, my dad came over from Italy, and he's a hard worker. And um, when he passed away. I didn't feel comfortable with my stepmom being living there with her. I just didn't feel comfortable. I just wanted to go with my real mom. You know what I mean? But my my real mom had issues, and and and, and while we we went from living in a nice neighborhood to going to probably thirty different schools. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Only white dude in the school. That type of that type of thing. You know what I'm saying? You, you yeah. So, yeah. Did you struggle always, to adapt? Always, always fighting, always fist fighting, always doing this. But when I met PK, I was 14 years old. Right. I met PK. I was 14 years old. And after I met PK and I start boxing, I, I'm telling you something. I didn't. I don't. I, I could count on my hands how many times I got into street fights because boxing actually saved. I I didn't have to prove myself to nobody. I didn't have yeah. to do that no more. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, with all due respect, when you mentioned, you know, when we talk about the the start that you've had, obviously with your dad and then with your mom moving to the different areas, it's not exactly set you up for success. But is that given? Is did that give you the resolve to go on and do what you did and that determination? You know, I'm, gonna you, I'm, I'm gonna tell you what I what I really believe that uh, that that gave me the drive and like I wanted to do something. I was with a girl. 
well, I met this girl young, 14 years old, down McKee's Rocks. We was together for like 20, uh, I, I, we broke when I was like 21. And um, I, I was getting up and up. I was like, I was, at the time, I was the prospect of the year, Ring Magazine prospect of the year. And uh, I was probably 17 and 0, 16 and 0. I forget, I, I was around that. And, uh, and uh, she had a baby. And the baby, the baby was, I thought the baby was mine. To this day, the baby's last name is mine. But the baby was black, half and half, you know what I mean? Was, was one of my boys, my, my, it was one of my best friend's uh, babies. And that like crushed me, but I had a drive. One night, listen to this, one night I was so mad because I was crying. I mean, I would, I, what, how wouldn't I crush somebody? I mean, it did something that like I can't even explain. You know what I mean? And one night I was in the mirror for 24 hours shadow boxing, thinking of being go <laughs> And uh, when I say 24 hours straight shadow boxing, 24 hours straight shadow boxing with no nothing, just me in the mirror. You know what I mean? That's how the rate, and then it just was like, no way, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. There's no way that I'm not gonna make it. And that's the way I put it. I just, I just, that's how I, you know. And I tell you what, my promoters, my promoter put me in position to make it. You know what I mean? I'll tell you another story. Well, I was fighting, um, Israel Cordona was fighting uh, David Sample on USA Tuesday Night Fights. And I was four and I was four and zero at the fights, and I li I'll never forget. I lived with my grandma because because my mom was having problems. So I lived with my, over with my grandma. My grandma was from that. My whole family's from Italy, so I, I go over. There, I live. I had PK drop me off after the gym, and he he calls me on the phone. To this day, I remember this number seven eight one four four nine one. He calls me on the phone, right, and he's like, "Paul, put on USA Tuesday Night Fights." So I put it on, and, and um. I'm watching Cardona fight uh, David Sample, and they keep shutting the lights out on on the in the building. David Sample's give like showing me how easy it's gonna be to. I mean, I never know he's gonna fight Cardona, but PK told me that day. That day he said, "Paul, if you ever get a chance to fight this guy, you can fight. You can beat this guy right now." I'll never forget that. So when then now listen, that's four and zero. Oh. Now I'm twenty six and zero, oh, and I'm fighting the guy that my trainer, even though he passed away, my trainer told me, "There's this dude. This dude is built for you. The style is perfect." When Shane Mosley moved up in weight, I somehow moved right. Right, you know how boxing is. Yeah, I mean, sure. you know how it is. It, and and they slid me right in the number two spot. I got that. I got a. I got a mandatory shot with a guy that I and went four and zero, oh, and I owned them. If you didn't watch the fight, I owned them. You know what so, I mean? So let me ask you this, Paul. So like, obviously, you know, in terms of your fight, and you you were um, a success in that, and then you'd mentioned obviously not being necessarily set, not being settled at all as a kid. Did boxing give you that consistency where you go to a gym regardless and you have an identity and where you are accepted? And it, you, you just hadn't had that all the way through that sort of, I, I suppose the best word is traumatic experience that you'd had until until your mid-teens, right? I mean, but boxing, boxing made me who I am. I mean, I don't, I don't know how to do nothing. So, like, for instance, like, I'm, I, if, if, I, if, if, if I was to get a job, well, I've been had I've been working for five years. If I was to get a job, it has to be labor. You know what I mean? But there ain't, I'm not gonna let no one out out labor me. I'm not gonna. It gave me that. It gave me that type of thing. If we're if we're in the gym, I'm not letting no one out work me. As a trainer, I'm not I'm not gonna settle for like just sit there and look, sit, do this and do this and do this and do this. No, I'm hands on. You know what I mean? And boxing gave that to me. You know, and the people, uh, people around boxing gave it to me. Let, you have to remember when PK passed away. Listen, when PK passed away, he was my PK was my trainer. He was my head trainer. That was my trainer. That's the guy that I called my trainer. But I got a chance to be with guys like Tommy and Kello. Okay, Jesse Reed. 
Jesse Reed been with multiple them Orlando, you know, when you say Orlando Canizales, you're talking about a Hall of Fame, one of the baddest, baddest dudes I know. Orlando Canizales, I got a chance to be with Emmanuel Stewart. I got a chance to be with Buddy McGurk. I got a chance to be with my favorite fighter ever, Pernell Whitaker. I got a chance to be around Panama Lewis. I mean, I got, I, I had the chance to learn from, and I tell him, as soon as I met them, I'm t- I told him, anything you show me, I'm stealing. Because one day I'm going to be a trainer. One day I want to be a trainer. That's my dream. I would love to be a trainer. It's, it's, you know what I mean? Cutting these trees down ain't no joke. You know what I mean? I, want, I would like to. And you know what? It would be a sin. It would be a sin for me not to give back the knowledge that I know to another kid. You know what I'm saying? Hey, so you mentioned Pernell there. That's where I was actually going to go. So I, obviously I knew that you looked up to Pernell back in the day, but did you even look back into him before you had your style change and before you were shot? Or was that something that when you adapted, you were like, oh yeah, maybe I'm more that kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. When, when, I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I got shot and I had to change my style, it was definitely, you know what I mean? Because I was like, a, I was a more body guy, like Chavez, I'd go to the body a lot. You know what I mean? And then I had to be more slippery. I had to be more, you know, go yeah. to the right, make a miss, go to the right, hit, hit. You know, I wasn't a big power, I wasn't a big power puncher. I wasn't a big power puncher. I had the box. How many times I went 12 rounds? I don't even know. I mean, maybe 20, 30, 15, 20 times. You know what I mean? Let me ask you this. So I've done this with, with Kelly Pavlik, and obviously he talked about the pressures of being a fighter from Youngstown, right? Is that something you relate to being from Pittsburgh yeah, sure. in terms yeah, of like a medium-sized city and everyone knowing and everyone knowing your business and where you're at and stuff? Yeah, that's, that's 100% just like that. Just like that. I like, I, Kel, I'll tell you a story. I was in the junior, we, I was working with a kid named Raquan Kimbrough, right? And I'm wearing, uh, we're in Philadelphia. And I and and my train and he and, my, and he was number one in the world. Burke won't end up being number one in the world. And I and I seen this. I seen this white kid fight. He's 132 pounds. He was young. It was Kelly Pavlik. I said, "There's the guy who you gotta watch for. That is the guy." And, and then I would get out in the gym and I tell his this guy. I, I go to Ohio with Jack Lowe, his trainer. I yeah. go down there all the time. The box. I was I would get sparring with Kenny Sigrani. Uh, Greg Kick, uh, just re- regular 10 round fighters, good guys. And uh, I just couldn't believe how great Kelly was. And I mean, he was just, he was just amazing, I think. I remember Verkang Kimbro, actually. He was a big, muscly, he was a muscly dude, wasn't he? Really strong and well built. Um, so your style then, Paul, so it's, it's, it's one that, you know, probably more people should support and i remember seeing andre ward talk about this once uh on a podcast where he's saying that you know too many people in boxing whether it's analysts or fans want all action and stuff but obviously what we really want to do is appreciate the masters of the sport right and the guys who hit and don't get hit and that's what we want to you know and and really we probably don't celebrate those guys enough yeah and and it ain't the art of it the art of it it, is it seems like I tell you what, I was at the, I was at this amateur tournament with my son, and my son's boxing beautifully, boxing the way he's supposed to do, box, hit, not get, hit, not get. But they're they're more interested, you know what I mean? It's just the way they're bringing them up. It's the way it is. That's just how it is. They're just bringing them up. This, bum, 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 bum. but then you have to say the teacher, the teachers are the. The teachers are dying. The the the, 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 the guys that the that are great, the Eddie Futches, the Mayo Stewarts, all the Jesse Reed, they're getting older. They can't really show you the angles anymore. I'm with, I'm with Jesse right now. He trains my son right now. Jesse Reed trains my son right now. And he like I know what he's talking about, so I can relate, so I help him. He tells me what to do, and boom, and them just them little them teachers are Kenny Adams, Kenny Adams, great great trainer. You understand what I'm saying? These these guys are getting older, yeah, yeah sure. and they're still and they're still working there, and and they're still doing, and they're still in the gym doing what they got to do. You know what I mean? Where's Teaching your Kenny? that. Kenny's still at the city boxing in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Kenny's still at the gym every day. 
Yeah. He's doing one arm push ups. <laughs> Are you? I, I swear to God in my life, I've seen him with my own eyes do like 10 one arm push ups. So he's not with the bullshit. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, so obviously we, we touched upon it. You were a good amateur, right? So when you turned pro, what was the idea? Was that, was it to put food on the table or was it to be a world champion? It was to put food on the table. You know, I never, I never really, I never really, uh, I, I, I always thought, I always thought I was going to be a main, 10 round main event fighter, go in the backyard and beat the shit out of you, go in your backyard. But it ended up being totally different. I ended up being a 10 round fighter and then people were coming to my backyard. And it, you know what I mean? And, and how, how, how I didn't fight Mayweather, how I didn't fight Stevie Johnson, how I didn't fight Cesar Brazon, uh, Castillo. I can't tell you that, but I can tell you this. My, I, I grew up from a, what an Italian a person, and he the, the rules were, were this. You don't talk to your manager or your promoter. Just be happy they're giving you money to put your food. And my, 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 my um, trainer never let me touch my fight money. You, you understand what I'm saying? And when I touched my fight money, I kept touching, I kept touching, I kept touching it. And then all of a sudden, the money ran out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's a familiar story, right? It's a familiar story. Hey, so were you popular when you when you started, when you turned pro in Pittsburgh? Do, do, were people coming and showing up to, to see you right from the start? What's that? When you turned pro in Pittsburgh, were people showing up to see you right from yeah. the start? Yeah, I had a, I had a good following right four round from a four round fighter. Like I I'd go to my my manager was Al Monzo, and um I we we put fifteen hundred fifteen hundred people in the um place. And then you were fighting basically five times a year for the first four or five. I mean, first year I was fighting like eight ten times a year. Yeah, and. You like that. You like the busyness, the activity. Because when we talk about you, or you, you talk about old school stuff, very hey, rare for a prospect to get that. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. The the busy an inactive an an inactive fighter don't have a chance with a with an active fight. You have to stay active to in order to fight in order to be good. I believe that. I believe that thoroughly. As an amateur, too. As an amateur, this is what you do as an amateur. You're learning. When, and don't, when you lose, you learn. When you win, you win. It, it's You're just learning. You're always learning. You're always learning. You Because you have to master your craft. you got to master that. Before I let my son take off his headgear, he'll be a professional. You know what I mean? He'll be blocking like this. He won't be blocking like this. His, his elbows will be in. His chin won't be down, you know, that type of thing. He'll learn how to take time off the clock. He'll learn how to walk away. He'll learn how to do things that people can that You just don't teach no more. I, nobody does that. Nobody, nobody teaches how, how you take. <laughs> Sitting there here, I'm on the inside, blocking, blocking, blocking. So now you're okay. Fuck blocking. I'm walking. I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to take, I'm going to take the time off the clock. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to win this. Huh, 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 huh. And then I'm going to take a walk. When do we see it anymore? When do we see guys boxing like that? Taking walks, wasting time, chilling, relaxing. How many times, when do you see it? So I suppose what you're talking about is what you hear for, what you hear these days is ring generalship, right? But you don't that, see too much of it. That part, that part, that part. So those early days, right, those first 25 fights that came real quick, were you drinking in those days? I'd always drink. But I would drink. It wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a long drinking thing. I had no money. I was making $50 a round. You know, yeah. so I'm, I, after the fight, boom, I'd maybe drink for a day or two. I'm back in the gym on Monday. You understand what I'm saying? But then when I got to, I, 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 hit, I, I, I fought Cardona, now I'm a Pittsburgh kid. Now all of a sudden, I'm instead of making, you know, okay, I, I, I fought 12, let me tell you something, I fought 12 rounds for $600. I, I've been in fights like that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And now I'm, at, now I'm making uh, 200,000, 500,000, it might not be a lot of money now, of course, it's not a lot of money now, but these YouTubers, how about the YouTuber guys? 
they're making millions of dollars and they don't, they never, I, I just, it's, it's amazing. And, and then I, and then when I hear people say it's good for boxing, how, oh, because it's bringing out people, is, I guess, because they got, I don't understand, I don't understand how that could be good for boxing. No, well, hey, I had the perfect example of that because my son is like 15 and he wanted to see one of these YouTube fights that they put on uh, on a regular boxing bill. And so um, I bought the pay-per-view for him and he literally sped the thing up to the fight with the YouTubers, watched the fight and turned it off and he had no interest in the rest of the stuff. So we kind of see that. So you're not going to expand the audience because they're just going to pick what they want to watch off yeah. it. Um, but yeah, I can see you're getting pretty hot about that and the, the amount of money being spent on these guys without the without paying their dues in the sport, right? That's the most, that's got to be the worst thing when you talk about your track record through the amateurs and then having so many fights before winning a world title and stuff like you paid a lot of dues and now these guys like three fights, four fights and making millions. They're making millions. I mean, look at Jake Paul. He's, yeah. he's, he's about to fight, he's about to fight um, Rockman. You know what I mean? And it's like Rockman paid his dues. He's he was in, he's always in the gym. I, I go to the same gym with him. He's always working. They're all they're always in the gym. But I'm saying that he grew up in the gym. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? His dad was the heavyweight champion of the world. You know what I mean? And then I mean I feel I'm I'm glad that he got a fight like that. And and that, then he can then he could make whatever they make, whatever that is. I feel good for for um our scene, but you know what I'm saying? You understand? But the sport, I'm just talking about the sport. I'm just talking about the sport in general. Sure. One, sure. one of these dudes, what listen, one of these dudes, one of these YouTubers is, is gonna end up getting knocked out, poked up. Hey, so PK passed away in 97. How did that how did that um stack up with all of the stuff that's gone through in your that you've gone through yeah, in your life? Was that, that up there with the worst? That was the worst. That was the worst. And my, the, my, I have I have to can't tell you that my I lost my brother. A couple, a couple years ago, and I don't want to talk about that. Harry, you lost about Harry. Charlie. Charlie, was he younger or older? He was younger. And was he still in Pittsburgh? Yeah, he was smoking crack. He died smoking crack. Jeez, man! So you've got this permanent reminder of what it was like in Pittsburgh. Which does this explain why you're in Vegas now to stay yeah. away from the temptations yeah. and stuff? Yeah, it's not. It ain't no good. It, let me tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something. I I I I got. I was drinking. Okay. I stabbed my brother. He stole my son's Christmas present. So I I wasn't with that, and I couldn't beat him. <laughs> so I have to beat him. So I just I poked him. Cops came. They Rodney King me. You, you remember Rodney King? But I didn't get paid for it. I didn't, get paid, I didn't get paid to get Rodney King. I, they had my cases. They gave me seven open aggravated assaults on police. Meaning if you get in trouble, I had to wait this much time to get out of Pittsburgh. If I get in trouble one time, I go back in front of that judge and, I'm, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll die in jail. Did you ever get to meet Johnny Tapia? I never met Johnny Tapia. But Johnny Tapia was... Um, trained by Jesse Reed, and Jesse would always talk to me about John Tapp. What kind of stuff? Because obviously, I'm guessing Jesse sees similarities, right, between yeah, you guys. Of, of course. And, and he, he would always tell me, he, he, he would just always tell me he, he don't want to see me, even nowadays. Like, like Jesse's a really, he's, he really, he's helping me major out here. And he would tell me, like, I don't want to see you end up like Johnny Tapia. Kenny Porter told me that one time too. I was in. A, I used to I stay with um, Kenny Porter. He was training me for like six months down in Vegas at the end of my career. And he said, "Paul, you keep it up, you're going to end up like Johnny Tapia. You keep it up, you because that's when drugs got involved. And soon, I want to tell you something. Soon as the drugs got involved, I would say when I was 28 years old, I was. I don't even because I really can't even consider myself a real fighter back then. 
I can't consider, you can't do drugs and be a boxer. You can't drink and be a boxer. You can't lie to yourself and act like you can, you can, you're going to beat somebody like me when I'm coming, I'm in the best shape. I'm all about this and I'm not drinking. I'm not doing nothing. How are you going to beat me? You're smoking weed and you're doing this and you're doing that. How, how can that, how, how can that happen? I'm going a, I'm to a just, I'll work it. If you could do your time again, let me ask you this in two ways. If you could do your time again, would you do things differently? The, um, the, if, I could do it, the, if I could do it again, see, we, I was loyal to my promoter, my gig. Yep. I wouldn't pick up a fucking glass of alcohol, not one. I would never put that in my body ever in life. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? If I could, if I could do it again, I would, that, that's the first thing I would never do. And... I would, we didn't have social media, so we can't, we could, I'm not a call out type of guy anyway. Oh, I'm, I'm not that type of guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, that. I just can't be, I'm not, I'm, I'm not like that. You know what I mean? But I would add, I would definitely ask my promoter, hold up. Uh, uh, the, on ESPN two, they said, uh, they don't, they can see me fighting Stevie Johnson, Angel Man Freddie, Arturo Gotti. They, they said that on ESPN2 after, my, after I won the title. How do, how do I fight Renardo Fournette? And then, I fought, and, then, and then I fought Sosa, which Sosa is a beast. Victoria and Sosa could fight. He had me clipped. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? But like, I just didn't understand that after, the, after I showed everybody I can fight for real fight, and, and, and is willing to die in there to fight because I showed that. I showed that I was willing to go all out. You know what I mean? I was, I was, I was booked. Then you fight Mike Griffin. Mike, I mean, and he gave me, and, and, and then you fight him, and no one understands. I'm fighting him a couple, I'm going to camp a couple weeks after I had the concussion. The, the whole camp was terrible. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm trying to say? So after Sosa, you went into camp with a concussion. Yeah, I went, to, I went, yeah. To, went down to Texas in a hundred and some degrees heat. Um, Jesse was training with Lou Savarese. He was fighting Mike Tyson, uh, and I was, and I had, and, I, and he had to train both of us. And I went, to, I fought Mike Griffin, and it, I looked like shit. I looked like basically like shit. Thank God the HBO gave me a chance to fight Bill Irwin again. Like gave me another chance to get on HBO because I thought I wasn't ever going to get back on TV again you know, after that performance. I felt like mm. back then. Did you did, were you hanging out with Tyson because he was? Oh no, you were hanging out with Lou Savarese, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Hey, Lou, Lou's a cool dude, right? Yeah, he's a nice guy. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. Hey, um, so you started working with Tom Yankello, right? After yeah. after a few weeks. Um, how did so how did that come about? Me, me and Tom, Tom, see PK, PK. What I was working with PK, and PK was was getting older, was getting sicker, was ha was having um, uh, he would have trouble talking. Like so you could tell the strokes and stuff. You know, I don't know, I don't know too much about the health things and stuff like that, but. He would let me go with Tommy and let me train with Tommy, and you know, and, and I would, I'd be me and Tommy would be. I sometimes I, I went to go live with Tommy for three weeks, four weeks. You know what I mean? PK trusted me. I wasn't a, I'm not a weirdo. You know what I mean? So I, he was, he was PK. You know what I'm saying? So he would let me go and work with Tommy and Tommy, Tommy. I don't care what anybody says. The best fundamental trainer in the game. Fundamentally sound, no one's better than me in, in, in with fundamentals. There's not, no, you can't tell me. He's a, he, he all you gotta do is listen to Roy Jones. And Roy Jones, pound for pound, maybe could be arguably the best fighter ever. Hey, we kind of skipped over this, by the way. Obviously, you said, you know, you won the title against Cardona. Like, how good did that feel to be announced as the IBF? lightweight champion of the world with everything you've been through with all that trauma and everything else how good did it feel to hit the top of the mountain 
I mean, I, it felt, if I, I was like, I, it was like a dream come true, you know what I mean? But I just didn't understand why I didn't have my belt that night, because they're supposed to give me my belt that night. But if you look at ESPN too, I'm like, where's my belt at? Where's my belt? I thought I wanted to wrap that thing around my waist. But they, they oh, we'll, we'll breathe. I'm like, I never heard no shit like that. But it's cool though, you know what I mean? If if it felt amazing, because listen, my whole life changed overnight i swear to you on my life now the people that don't that don't necessarily uh like me now they love me now the, now they're now the, now the girls that are like you know you 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 look you are right, you look good but you ain't got no money now they love me you know what i mean the friends are coming everywhere and people you know now now it's like now now here's where the problem goes now you you fight on TV, you have the belt, you make this much money. It's obviously you can't keep fighting month to month. You now you're now you're not staying busy. You're not being in. You're not doing what you're supposed to do because you're spending time. You you have. Let's listen. I look. I never had nothing. I can never go to the uh, restaurants and go to the stores and buy clothes and buy shoes and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So. I was hitting everything up, you know, as a young kid, you don't, you, I, I mean, I didn't know I was young. I didn't have no guidance. I had no, I love my mom. My mom's a great lady, but my mom's, my mom's been on crack. My mom's been on crack since 1994, 1994, ever since uh, Pookie, New Jack City. You remember that? You remember that? Yeah. 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 And I'm talking about on it. She's 72 years old right now on it. You know what I mean? So it's like, it is deep, it's real. Jeez, so it's, it's on, you know something, I, but I'm gonna tell you something what this dude told me. I, I was in prison, right? And and uh, th this dude this dude goes like this. He, he, said, he said, man, he looked at me and he said, he said, I don't know how you, I don't know how you don't kill yourself. I said, wow, that's deep. I don't know how you didn't kill yourself. That's what he said to me After, from what, you know, you're going, well, the reason why I didn't kill myself is because I never had shit and I just went back to never having shit. <laughs> and it was like, it was like, it was like jumping rope. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, you double jump, you gotta pick it up, I'm picking it up. Now I go back to relax. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Jeez, man. So, yeah, there's, I remember Matthew Saar Mohammed, right? The great light heavyweight champ. He used to tell me, like, sometimes he would wish he never had it all because when he didn't have it he wouldn't have missed it because he didn't know what it was like you know do you do you relate to that i, I could relate to that i can relate to that big but 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 if i did if i if i could i would hate to have anything if i had something and then i got blessed with that little bit of time five years five years making money like that you know what i mean yeah. if i i would have probably went nuts but yeah. i knew what it was like not to have nothing so it was just like it didn't mean nothing to me so i suppose you have a real uh you put a real value when mike when you see mike tyson's success story and you see his trajectory you can sympathize i, I mean he came back from that I and mean, that's yeah. amazing and he's better than he ever was i mean he's, he's just a better dude he's everything about him is better you know what i mean and he did the, and he come how how do you come back from something like that Mike Tyson did, but listen, Mike Tyson is the best heavyweight ever. You heard it right here. I said that. Mike Tyson, in my eyes, is the best heavyweight ever. I, I just, that's my opinion. I had a chance to watch Mike Tyson. I was with Luce Avarice and was watching Mike Tyson. All he wanted to do is watch Buster Douglas and versus Mike Tyson. And the more I watched it, the more I seen. That's a smart dude. I mean, he's old school. He's setting things up. He he knew like on in the eighth round, he knew like he knew like Monday comes after Sunday. When I hit you with this uppercut, you're not you're, you're getting knocked out. But he long count. That was a long count. That was a long count. Got up and you know. God, that's, a, that's an unpopular take though, right? When you look at Ali, Joe Lewis, there's some greats in there, right? Yeah, Joe Lewis, unbelievable. Ali, um, they're all the great. They're all great. I mean, hey, unbelievable. So sweet, so sweet. But I don't, yeah. No, no, go ahead. 
Okay, I look at it like this. And and I'm not taking away from that. Not, 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 you see Muhammad, you see Muhammad Ali's funeral. He's the greatest. You know, you see his, did you see his funeral? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Um, unbelievable. So that's the that's that that I don't I don't think Floyd if, if uh, how's Floyd gonna? You think people are gonna come to Floyd's funeral like that? The presidents and all that other stuff, huh? We'll come to Floyd in a sec. Hey, um. It was one of the things I wanted to ask you. Obviously, we mentioned drugs a few times. When, what was the first drug you ever did, and when? Was it back when you were a kid? No, no, I did ecstasy. Was that uh, like, through your? Was that through your your years of fame that you tried? I, it? Yeah, yeah. When I when I um won the title, I was at, I was after I won the title. Yeah. So why was that? Just to sort of get a high, and was it a, like I, a peer pressure thing? Listen, listen, addic addictions, addictions, a mother, you know what I'm saying? And I was, I'm a, it's in my, it's in my, gen it was in my genetics, you know what I mean? And people would just give me stuff, try to, I mean, they would just do anything, you know what I'm saying? I, I more like trying to turn me on to it and they right. turned me on to it and that's what happened. Yeah, man. Hey, um, it's so obviously we touched upon Floyd there in '99. We've all we've all seen the footage of you sparring Floyd, but before the footage came out, obviously it was it became legend that Floyd had been out of the gym, came back, went to the gym, and and you and he couldn't do anything with you. Is that what, tell me about the session? I mean, it's it's just like like he come in the gym, we we boxed. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where, I don't know he was in the MF. I don't know what he was doing, but I was, I was like ten days away from a fight. You know what I mean? I was sharp. I don't care. Who, listen, when you love boxing, and I was obsessed with boxing, and I was, a, I was, I was a big lightweight, one hundred thirty-five pounds. I was a five and five, five and eight, five and nine. I was big. I'm strong as hell as a hundred thirty-five pounder, and there was no way you're just gonna come out, come off the streets and just beat the shit out of me. That ain't happening. Well, how that doesn't even make sense. That don't to me don't make sense. So what 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 happened? What how did he come in and and think he was gonna whoop you? Yeah, for sure. And I'm he like, didn't. how like I didn't have it. I'm not the, I'm not the one that video. I don't videotape. I never videotape my spawn. I have, I he come in deep. I'm talking about the whole gym was packed. When you see a whole gym with cameras come in there, we're on Richard Steele's gym. You don't ever see that. I don't see that. Just for some spawn. You know what I mean? And then and then that's just how it went down. And he, he thought he's gonna, I mean, that's just how that's just how it was. You know so I mean? is that one of the things that most people ask you about? Sorry. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. That I believe wholeheartedly that cost that cost me the fight with him. Because the, the 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 people who put that whoever put that out there on the internet, I mean, now you're the he was always in charge. Floyd Mayweather was always in charge. He had HBO deals all all his whole life. He was great. He was a great. Come on, he's one of the best ever. Could argument argumentally maybe the best ever. You know what I mean? You gotta, you, who who ain't gonna give somebody props? You gotta give him his props. And I'm just looking at it like this: Styles make fights. Styles make fights. And and uh, and I, I I I seen him one time. I seen him before, when he fought Castillo, and he told me how he. I I, I seen him in. Um, he was eating. I said, "Good luck today. For good luck tomorrow for your fight with Castillo. The first fight, because they flew me down there to go watch the fight, and then all of a sudden I'm at the crab table. I'm running right through you. Like I'm running right through you." And then I immediately called my brother Harry. I said, "Bro, he really thinks he could run right through me. Nobody in at 135 pounds is gonna walk right through me right now. Nobody. No, I, I'm too slick for that bullshit." And then some. If you watch the last, if you watch this, if you watch the six, the last round, the late, the last round, how he, how could you, to turn Southpaw on me? I was like, wow, he's he really turned southpaw on me. I'm a, I'm gonna clip him with this right hook. He's getting hooked up with this. And then after I hit him, I'm putting my hands down right in front of him. My hands were like, yes. 
I'm just going like this. I'm going like this. Punches are going by. Yeah, that's Floyd Mayweather. Those are, those are Floyd Mayweather's punches. Missing by just like that. Just that much. You know? So and then there was there was speculation that he was like lying on the floor for twenty minutes after the after the spa. I, I don't know. He's probably tired. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, sure, yeah. sure. Okay. So he obviously, was, in your... the body, I I I I was going to the body. You know what I mean? Body punches. They 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 make you tired. Yeah. If you're not ready to get hit in the body, they make you tired. Yeah. Shit, I don't want to hit in the body in a violent shape. You had mentioned uh, at the start that you were finding it hard to get the big names, but you did get the Man Freddy fight, right? So that must have I'm been. Not, but why I get, why I got the Man Freddy fight in two thousand and one. Come on, I, and, and, and around that time, around that time, around that time, I'm gonna go off. I'm gonna say go off record. I wasn't. I was. You know, what I, mean? I was having my issues in the streets. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But I was having. So why didn't I get that? Right after, I don't know how it works. I'm not a promoter or manager, but I can tell you one thing: before I die, I'll be one of the best trainers you ever, you ever they will ever, you ever hear about. You, I guarantee that. So, from what I can see, Paul, right, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like you've got a real you you had a real crossroads, right, of where you had like a a, a, a toxic, traumatic background, and then you hit that with wealth, fame, and money, and celebrity. And the two things just couldn't cope with one another, right? No, nah, exactly. And I even, I, I even talked to him. Okay, listen. All right. You know I shot my girlfriend. Yes, I remember reading about that. Yeah, sure. Okay, well, she's, she's right here next to me. If someone shoots me, if, you, if, it, was a, if it was an accident, you wouldn't be next to me. Motherfucker, you'd be doing it. You'd be booked. I'm booking you. You shoot me, I'm booking. You know what I mean? But no, obviously she was she 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 understood that I, it wasn't me. That, that that wasn't me. That was that was the that was the drug the drugs the alcohol. That was what that was. That wasn't and that was just what it was. Circumstances at the time people were talking about tying me up, kidnapping me, doing all this other crazy stuff. Cause I bought a house right in my neighborhood. Cause I never wanted to get like I never wanted to get brand new, and I never wanted to. Meanwhile, I should have took when I won the title, I should have took the my money and and moved out somewhere like this, where or where the fighters are. I shouldn't. Have, and Jesse would tell me that Jesse Reed would tell me that all the he would tell me that all the time. Paul, leave Pittsburgh. You gotta leave Pittsburgh. You have to leave Pittsburgh. No one got money, so everybody's gonna have your money. And that's what happened. People say, oh, he's spending money. No, man. No, I gave my money away. You know what I mean? I I, I gave I paid people's houses for a whole two years. People on section, bang, bang, bang I have to hook this up two years. I, I hook the kids up. I do that. I do that. Nah, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Are any of those guys helping you now or speaking to you now? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. It's familiar, man. Hey, I've seen this story on loop. You know, Matthew was Matthew was telling me the same thing. Can't even find the guys now. Tommy hey, Morrison hey. told me. Tommy Morrison told me the same stuff. He said, I bought one guy's wife boobs and everything. God knows where he went. <laughs> I yeah, like I go buy with cars. I'm talking about nice ass cars, like the old school joints. I buy a car, this and that. And and I tell you what. I'm gonna keep it real with you. The only people that call me today are the people that love me. Jesse Reed calls me. My uh, my brother calls me. My family, like my, my close family, my mother, and my son. I'm gonna keep it a hundred with you. Hey, um, so um, Nadine, who you mentioned, who you're with now, she was pregnant at the time when you, when she when you shot her, right? Was that right? No, she was having a miscarriage. Oh wow! Wow. Okay. Gina, a year later. She got, pregnant. she got pregnant with my son a year later. Okay. Okay. Um, geez, man. So how do you how do you guys get? Because you do, you did time for that though, right? Yeah. Yeah. How long did you do? Thirty three months, but really like nineteen months in the really in, in the prison. I, I I did nineteen months in the prison, but then they they I was stuck in a halfway house because I was trying to go to Detroit to. Uh, to work with Emmanuel, yeah. I was going, and 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 they didn't let me. Um, 
go into the uh and Detroit didn't let the let me go in their town because of the, my gun violence. Wow. Wow. You have, get, you have to get all that like it's just the way DOC, the DOC program is. You know what I mean? Man, the, the guy who's too rough for the, to Detroit, that's too bad, man. That's bad. Hey, I mean, um, they won't let me go in because it, I guess it, too much too much guns and too many shootings, you know what I mean? Um so prison, did you have a target on your back because of who you were, yeah. or did you know that's, people inside and stuff? That's what I'm saying. Like that's that's there, that's that right there is the best question ever. Like I'm in a pen, listen, I'm in a penitentiary, right? I'm a boxer in the penitentiary, and I went in several times because of my stupid ass. You know, I violated three times, went to, back to jail three times, and the thing about it is, I never been in a, I never been in a fight in prison. I never been in a, I have maybe one altercation, an altercation that was settled without going like this. So it just goes, to, it just goes to show you what, what, who you become when you put that shit in your body. Like if you're, I, listen, I, I, I went, I was in Schumann Center, that's the detention center for being young. I was in the count, Allegheny County Jail. I was in a penitentiary and I never been in a, in a, in a, um, like where people were big, Charlie gun for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just your experience is that. Just... Hey, yeah. <laughs> so tell me about Emmanuel and your work with Emmanuel. Emmanuel was a very smart guy. I went, I was out in um, Marina Del Rey with Emmanuel for about uh, like three, 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 three months. I was out there with Clickos and Vernon Forrest. I think it was when Vernon was fighting. For, when, remember when Vernon fought Shane Mosley? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I was out with him back then, and Emmanuel was a smart guy. I mean, yeah, he was a smart guy. He, he like, and honestly, you know what he told me? Wait, did I tell you this story? You know what he said for me to do with this left hand? I'm not left-handed, but listen what he told me to do it. Stick it up my ass. It ain't worth shit. <laughs> Coming from Emmanuel Stewart, wow. that's what he said to me. He's like, use it as a guy, 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 guy with it. I was salty as hell when he said that. I was mad as hell. Imagine someone saying that to you. I was mad as hell. But you know what I mean? That's just the way it is. Man yeah. was a very man, Emmanuel was extremely smart. And I think Emmanuel really liked punches. Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, and then obviously, you know, you mentioned Jesse, and I uh, can see obviously Jesse's having an impact on you now. How much of an impact did he have? I think he obviously predated Emmanuel, right? And how yes, come you went to Emmanuel and left Jesse? Listen, Jesse, because it was it, it, it because it was just I was the way Jesse treated me like I was his son, you know yeah. what I mean? And 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 you and and when you go back to the corner, the information is 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 you know I I like to say this: love wins everything. Yeah, love is going to win no matter what. It's be you can't be love. You know what I'm saying? Love is everything. It's in the Bible. It's all about love. You know what I mean? Life's about love. Too many people hate too much. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I don't hate on no. I don't like Jay Paul's getting his money. They uh, Mayweather fought Conor McGregor. They got their money. You know what I mean? Conor McGregor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can see. I can see the look. I can see the look. Hey, so you, you and Nadine, have you, so did you, have you guys been together all the way through this time? No. no. On and off. Yeah. Yeah, on and off. yeah. Okay. And, but she lives out in Vegas with you now. Yeah, she, she, she got, she, she got herself together. She came out Vegas and just like did her thing and, you know, worked hard and, you know what I'm saying? And Gino, 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 here, Gino said he wanted to fight, but Gino said he wanted to box. So yeah. only thing I could tell you about that is if he wanted to box, I, I trust it. Listen, I put him with Jesse. I put him with Jesse. I trust Jesse wholeheartedly, but, but I can't, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be, I can't sleep knowing he's in there taking in punches without, I, because he don't have to, you know what I mean? When you can, if you can box, you don't have to take them unnecessary punches because you can box and you don't got a box run around boxing. You can be right in front of them. Boom, them little, that, that little, them angles. Like remember Orlando Canizales? 
Remember, sure, remember, sure. boom, them angles, he turned on you, bam, knock you, hit, knock. And the good thing about my son, he can punch. Um, I mean? how, how old is your son? And what's, what style has he got? Is he orthodox? He's, yeah, he's, he's 17. He's a right-hander. You know what I mean? He had fights when he was with me because, you know, I'm, that's the way I, I'm talking about when he was seven, eight, nine, ten young fights. But they, they, they don't count them. So he got four. He had, since I've been here, he had four, four fights. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, and, and he's fighting when? For the Hall of Fame. He's thing. fighting in a couple, like a month from now. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, with the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame thing. Right, sure. So, you know what I mean? He's been doing like just one month too. Just trying to like keep him busy, stay busy. Because I tell him, he don't want to listen to this. I wish, you, I wish he was here so you could tell him. You know, he don't want to understand that you're 17 years old. Now you got four fights. When I was 17 years old, I had 80 fights, 70 fights. I fought, I was in the gym. I was in the, when I was 14, I never left the gym. I was sparring with all pros, Air Poe, like Tom Alexander, Baby Ho, Carl, I mean, you name them. Everybody, everybody that, that I, so, so it didn't matter who I fought because PK kept me in the gym sparring with Real professional 10 round main event fighters, guys that fight at Hector Camacho, like Eric fought Hector Camacho, I was his sparring partner. Tommy Alexander fought Hector Camacho, I was his sparring partner. You understand what I'm trying to say? I was 16 years old at the time. So I'm doing nothing but getting better. It don't matter. And so, and now when I turn pro, it doesn't matter who I'm fighting as long as I'm in the gym sparring and practicing and mastering what I do, put that work in. You, got, you have to master that. He sports with sure. Hey, and so with your son then, how do, you, how do you break the cycle of trauma and addiction and stuff? How do you do that? Do you, is it just we education never, and communicate? Communication, but you know what? He never, had to, he never had to go through that. Yeah. He never had to. Um, if, you, if I could look, show you the house. A mess. I mean, I'm saying, well, he's in a, he's in a house. You know yeah. what I mean? I was, I was a, he, he's in a house. I was on the porch, underneath the porch. For 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 a long periods of time, you know. What yeah, I'm saying? I heard about this. I heard about this. So this was was this at your mom's house, and you didn't want to go in the house, so you slept under the porch. No, no. My mom, my mom was, my mom was, my mom was gone. My mom was doing doing some doing stupid. I had to go with my cousins, and she did not. And there were too many people in the house. I was going under the porch. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. So that's home. You basically you're homeless. You know what I mean? And towards the end of my career, I had to, I had to, I, I, I put, I had to go into a house, an abandoned building, boom, go in there, put my furniture in it, and just, I, they call that squatting. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's, and that, it's, that was after you being a world champ. It's after me being a world champ. Hey man, that's nothing hits harder than that, right? That's that's brutal to have been at the top of the mountain and then have to accept that, right? Yeah, but you know, I, you know what? And I was, I was self sabotaging myself every, all the time. It just never stops. You know what I mean? You know, I sometimes I'd be like, they might, people, because people say, well, I might be scared of success, I guess. You know what I mean? But now, now I grew, I grew so much from that, from just everything, everything. I'm talking about everything that I went through in life. You know what I mean? And it's not like, I'm selling anything or selling this or selling. No, I, I don't got to do that. Um, when I go to the gym, when I go to the boxing gym, there ain't no talking. Any kid in the gym needs help, I'm with it. If they're trying, I'm not trying to steal no one's fighter. I'm from the old school. We don't do shit like that. You know what I mean? Well, the very right. fact you're still selling, you're still, the very fact you're still standing, that's enough of a sales pitch for anything after everything you've been through, right? The fact that you can be yeah, where you're at been, the mentality you have. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Since, you more since, since now, since, since I've been retired, guess what? I'm not embarrassed to tell you this. I died four times. You hear me? Yeah. I mean, well, not, not, overdoses and stuff. Yeah, no, not in stuff, overdose. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, you understand what I'm saying? So it, it wasn't this, me coming out here, it pretty much was me. If I want to live, I better get out of where I'm at and focus on doing this or I'm not going to live no more. 
And I realized that. I realized that. It's how? How? When you got people shooting up your house, how 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 are you supposed to how are you supposed to live? I can't I can't do I can't do a um argument everywhere I go in Pittsburgh. People are like you know what I mean, boom boom, busy, you know, the bullshit, you know what I'm saying? And then you end up fighting somebody or hooking somebody up. I'm just being honest. Since I've been retired, I got to do a couple of street fights, and I they said I never had power, but I had pretty good power. <laughs> that no joke. <laughs> I'm telling you, all it's the truth. Bink, doink, doink. Down goes Tyson. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, shit like that. You know what I mean? Man, so uh, well, there was a fight I wanted to ask you about. Obviously, you fought Dennis Pedersen, who then fought Ricky Hatton, but you, you had this war, right? And obviously, you weren't known for the wars, but I always remember you had this outstanding fight with Leonard Doreen. And it wasn't supposed to. It wasn't supposed to be like a thriller, but it was, right? And you guys went to the well, and he brought stuff out in you that you'd never had to show before. Yeah, yeah. And I told my brother, I'll never forget. It. We had a rematch. This, this is what happened. This is I'm gonna tell you what happened. We had a rematch. The rematch. We was gonna fight for seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. You know, I don't want to talk about Leonard because Leonard, Leonard's a good guy. But when he retired, how do you retire? And then when he retired when I was at boxing camp training for that fight. He retired. You Google it. Look it up. He retired, came out of retirement. I told my brother, Harry, but listen to this. I said, Harry, listen, I promise you. He, he said, you know, you made that. You, you fought his style. You fought his style. I said, no, I didn't fight his style. He couldn't take it to the body. And they didn't count not in the, in the fourth round. That was a knockdown, period, point blank. Go look it up. Watch it when you when you get a chance. You watch the fourth round. Boom, boom. He got hit with a left hand. Went down. I said, been ten eight round. Period. Period. No, no more rap about it. That's what that's the way I feel about it. And when he whenever we I went to camp, my trainer tells me my promoter, you know, he was very very um controlling. You know what I mean? And and be, um, as he should be, as he should with the guy he's dealing with, as he yeah. should be. Prove him how many times over and over to be to, to, that's the right thing to do so he um he tells me we're gonna fight a fight uh, we're gonna go we're gonna fight a fifty thousand dollar fight up in a, a non-title fight in in um in a turning stone arena i went home I, I i i left camp i'm not gonna i i had my own house i had money at the time i left camp i drank i drank i drank i did this i did this I end up shooting my girl but what end up well I, urinating on the street then from there i went from going down to the bar and then and sh then then guessing and then i and then ended up shooting my girl and then it all came to a halt now check this out leonard doran comes out of the arm and i told my brother I'm, i said i'm not gonna fight leonard doran he does not like it to the body what does arturo body knock him out so, yeah hey I've just had a, a flashback of sorts. Did you have like a yellow hammer? Not yellow. What did you have? I had a Pure. gray, a gray hammer. Yeah. Gray hammer. I'm sure I saw that in like newspapers and stuff. Was that linked to the shooting and stuff? Were you? Yeah. Were you? Yeah, you were in that at the time. Man, it's 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 a wild story. Obviously, the the, the Dream Finn, by the way, I did want to ask this. Obviously, you talked there about not getting the rematch. How hard was that fight? I thought, I mean, I've been in fights like that before. I thought I won the fight. I really, I'm not gonna lie. I thought I put in the hard, hard punches to the body. I thought I won the fight, but I don't what you do. I always watch the fight. When I watch the fight, I always turn the music off. I mean, the sound off so I could see. And each, every time I watch it, I, th I thought I won. I thought I, I thought I won the fight. And then obviously, I always knew you as a Mike Acree fighter back in the day. So is this why you're? Are you and Mike, you and Mike just had a handshake, right? Yeah. Come on. So, man. but were you resentful that you just were fighting in places in Erie and Mount Pitch. Pleasant? And after when I come home from prison, yeah, but it was it was it was bad. When I come home and I'm gone, how do you go from fighting on TV to fighting in club on club shows? I'm not talking bad about none of the opponents because they're fighters and they're making a living. You know, I'm not the one picking you, dog. My promoter picked you. And I ain't, I'm not the one asking my promoter who am I fighting. I don't give a fuck who I'm fighting. Just tell me when it is. You know what I mean? And then I just work on, I'm not watching you fight. I'm, I'm watching me fight. 
Because if as long as I'm doing me, as long as Paul at that time, as long as Paul boxes like Paul knows how to box, he's going to give anybody in the world trouble at that weight. So, well, the dog, the dog agrees with you, right? So there's, there's that as well. So, but in, in 2000, you, I mean, you boxed on, obviously on and off, you know, 06, 07, 08, 09. Inactivity. And, but it was still inactivity. Like, yeah. like, like you, I, I need to be more, you need to be in there more. You can't have a year. One time I had a year layoff and that's when I had enough of it. I had enough of it. Let me tell you how, how nice, how real of a guy Roy Jones is. Roy, I had enough of it, dude. I OD'd. I listen, I OD'd. I said, I'm, I'm done with Because I can't do this no more. When, whenever Mayweather fought Victor Ortiz, they lied to me and told me they were, I was going to get the Mayweather fight. They told me that. Meanwhile, that was all pride bullshit. But I talked to I talked to senior before on the phone. But maybe I maybe I don't even, I don't even want to talk about that. So so I I really believed in my heart that I was gonna get that fight. You understand what I'm saying? And then they then I they announced that on the internet around eleven o'clock, twelve, uh, 10, 11 o'clock. Then and my friend Nicole was like, Paul, you're not fighting him. Victor Ortiz is fighting him. And that was just it. I, guess what I did? Guess what I fuck I did? Guess what? I went down the street. I copped them. Bang, bang. OD. See you later. Then when I went to the rehab, I went to the rehab. Listen, I went to the rehab and the counselors told me, you cannot, that, you're, you're listening to the counselors. These are professional people. You know what I mean? They said, you cannot go back for Mike Gabriel. You cannot go. You, you guys cannot. You, you really, you, he's a great guy. I love Mike with all my he, If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have been a champion. I love Mike with all my heart. But he told me, you can't do it. You're going to end up, you cannot do this. You cannot do this relationship. So Roy Jones, Tommy knew Roy Jones or whatever. However way Roy, Roy came to the rehab and Roy, Roy said he was interested in helping me. And Roy stuck to everything he ever, ever said. He got me a chance to fight for the WBA title, but guess what? I lost. You know what I mean? If I'd have won that fight, maybe he he'd have got me the big major fight, Danny Garcia, whatever, whoever. You know what I'm saying? Whoever. You know what I mean? But I didn't. I didn't win. So that's what happened. Jeez, man. So yeah, you're talking about that fight with Johan Perez, which was up in in Chester at the Mountaineer uh, racetrack. Yeah. So, man, it's it's just crazy. So obviously, so that that OD was 2012, and then you were in you were in a rehab facility for seven months, and that's the one where Roy went went and found you, right? Yeah, yeah. So what? How how hard is rehab, and is it is it the hardest thing that you've ever had to put yourself? I'm I'm very I'm very I'm not saying I'm institutionalized, <laughs> but I'm very like I I I live better on a schedule. I, I, it's easy for me. When I go to prison, it's nothing. Just do the right thing. Get up in the morning, go do my road work in the yard, come home, come back, clean myself up, do what I got to do. When I'm, when I'm in a boxing camp, I'm not, I'm on, I'm, I'm good. I could adjust good. I'm good. It's nothing. You know what I mean? But when we see the, when we see the stuff in Hollywood and stuff and someone though, who's addicted to stuff or being on stuff in a, in a hard way, like, and then they go into whether it's prison or rehab, they have this, their body starts to go against them, right? And they start to get shakes and sweats and all the yeah. all the crap that we see. I, Is that what you've been through? No, I don't get them. I don't get them. So you just basically change your routine and schedule to fit into, and that's the only difference. It's like nine day, boom, it's over. It's a wrap. Do you miss and freedom when you do you miss freedom when it's taken away from you? Not too much. Do you miss the structure when that's taken away from you the other way around? Yes. And that's good that I, bro, being out here, it's like being in the, um, in the, you're, you know, I'm not saying that I'm locked up because I'm not locked up, but it, I'm, I am, I am, all, I'm, I'm, I'm actually lo like, I'm living a right, I'm living normal, like a normal life. I don't got people coming at my door trying to give me drugs. I don't got people coming at my door trying to, hey, Paul, let's go drink it. I don't, I don't have all that out here. I'm not saying I'm, I'm flat broke. No, I'm not flat broke. I'm, I'm, I'm not bad. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying is I, 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 I'm, I, I'm too much of a follower. I'm not a leader. 
I'm admitting it. I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not scared to tell the truth. It's just the way I am. You know what I mean? So if someone came over your door now and said, hey, hey I've got drink, I've got drugs, there's could you say no? There's, 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 two, there's too much, there's too more, it, it, it's too important for me, for my son, for the people in the gym. It, the, it's, it's, it, that, that part of the selfishness of the drugs and alcohol is gone from me. That part of the selfishness, you know what I mean? Because like that's that. a serious. That's, that's, when you're on drugs and alcohol, you're a selfish motherfucker. And that, I don't care what anybody says. When was the last time you took a drink or did any drugs? I'm good for like two years. I don't really count them. I don't. I don't count it. I just just go about doing it. But I come out here. I come out here and like clean myself up. Put it like that. Are you in any kind of program or do you have like counseling and that kind of stuff? And have you had counseling to deal with all the stuff from childhood? Yeah, I, yeah I've, been, I've been in counseling and stuff like that. Do you find and that I, useful? I, yeah, I recommend. I, I, me, I like the one-on-one -on -one counseling. I, I, that's, that, that's, that, I'm going to get one out here too when I, soon. You know what I mean? Because you never, like you just said, it, 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 you, it's like this, yes, like you have to, you have to practice these see i got myself in a in a, in a position where it's a, every morning i go swim i get up in the morning i go swim me and my girl we go swim i swim i swim for an hour Jeez. i come home she i don't eat nothing bad at all because she's into this vegan stuff but i'm not no vegan i'm not a vegan believe me dude i like steak i, I work at the slaughterhouse i don't like doing none of that that vegan stuff but anyway uh and i and i go to the gym and i talk to jesse every day so i'm like i'm I'm not, and I got a fighter here who I'm working with. He's one, he's one on one as a uh, professional. You know, he just hurt. He, he had a fight in, um, on the on the on the, on the on the fourth, and he hurt and he, and he hurt his left shoulder, so he had to pull out the fight. But I got somebody right, you know, who I'm responsible for right here, too. And he's, you know, what I mean, just someone. Someone I, I know, I mean, you, I, you know, whenever you take on challenges, it's, 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 it's good. It's something I like to do. I like to take on challenges. Hey, you mentioned food there. I heard that you're a good cook, right? Yeah, I'm Italian. <laughs> so what's the house special then? Not steak, right? <laughs> nah. Let him cook. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Nadine saying she doesn't let you cook? Yeah. Because he eats meat and I don't. Oh, I, I, I like I like pig, I I can make pig's feet. I like pig's feet. I can I, know, I love I muscles. I like muscles. I like all that stuff. She's I can make, I, the background. I can make hey, it so, pretty. Oh, there's 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 other stuff on your rap sheet, right? Which isn't like said to be like as, as serious as stuff. There was something about some lady in a headlock. And yeah, she's like, spitting. She spit in my face. I was drunk as hell. You ain't. I mean, I don't listen. You're gonna spit in my face, or hawk her right in my face. I don't like. Turn around. I don't like who you are. Boom! And she spit right in my face. Well, that's cool. You can do that. As soon as you walk out the bar, I'm gonna show you how I don't like who you are. I just picked her up and slammed her, and let her and I walked away. Now, whatever you say about it, people can say what they want to say about it. You don't spit in someone's face. Man. That's some ignorant ass shit. you I. I can't get over your stories Paul. i can't get over your life i'm i'm gobsmacked that you're still standing not only still standing but obviously talking to me about ambition hope your son and the stuff you want to do moving forwards like i take my hat off to you because like that's a serious back catalog of trauma and stuff you know like i, I look at it like you know what i look at it like think about this like beyond boxing well, but I can relate to boxing because I love it. You know what I mean? But I can more so relate to the kids that are coming in the gym that ain't got a mother, a father, that ain't got structure, that ain't ha that don't have money. That, you know what I'm saying? I can relate to that. Now, 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 it's not only that. It's... There's so many people, there's so many kids. It is about the kids, man. It, if it ain't about the kids, it's, it's, this is the next thing going. They're, they're the people that we're worrying about. Everybody's worrying about themselves. Nah, it's cool. You, I'm cool. 
you know what I'm saying? It's about the kids. It's about the, the, the growing when they're coming up and seeing how, how you can. And when you see you change, when you can, when you see what you're telling somebody and they're doing it, it makes you feel like unbelievable. I get, I'm, I get blasted off that. And when I tell you blasted, I get blasted. When I see my, I see my, my son hit the dude with that left fork. I said, just turn to the side, bang, and gave me, and it was, gave me eight count. That made me happy as hell. You know what I'm saying? When you see people in the ring sparring and you tell them to do something and they boom, they actually do it and it works, boom. Because God gave me an eye for boxing. Because that's all I watch. Like, like there is no TV watching. I watch, I, you can ask my girl. I, I'm watching Joe Lewis. I'm watching Charlie Burley. You know how hard it is to get them films. But PK sent me tons of films when I was a young buck. Uh, mentor, Chavez. Right now, I'm on a kick with Julio Cesar Chavez, okay? I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach, I'm trying to teach my son how to go to the body, how to bump up. You remember how Chavez used to give him little feints when he's inside and make you miss? People think that the, he would, when I, we was watching the Meldrew Taylor fight, man, he and it, everybody scored the the way they scored that was unbelievable to me. It was it was really unbelievable because Chavez was literally murdering him. Yeah, he was paying a price for every success he had, right? Oh my god! And it was a price that it, 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 it was going to take his life. That's how he hey. was coming. Um, so let me ask you this. When you see your son, obviously I see the, the excitement that you have about your son fighting, but as a dad, do you have the nerves as well? Because obviously it's a dangerous game. Now that's, the, that's, the biggest, that's the biggest thing in the world because I, me and my, that's, why I, that's why I love Jesse because Jesse, I, I like sort of let Jesse be, the, you know what I mean? And I just want to be the one that teaches him the right way, you know what I mean? I can show him. Cause I can't, I get mad. I get super mad. And, and a lot of, Hey, but then nowadays you got, you got people like Kenny and Sean, oh, that, that worked unbelievable. Look how great Sean's a great fighter. Unbelievable. You got that, uh, Tia Poma Lopez, him and his dad. So, you, I mean, they're, they're shown, but you remember back when we was coming up, we, I'm older, I'm 46 years old, but when father and son, they never recommended that. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, I remember it. Well, Shane Mosley and Jack and Roy and his dad. I mean, there was a. It didn't I mean, always work out, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like it's like um, just like that. You know, I I just gotta I just gotta watch my temper and try to hold back and hope like you know what I'm saying. It, it is frustrating as hell when you know when you know that what you have to do in order to be to win. And, and, and someone that doesn't want to listen to you and do whatever he, whatever he thinks you can do, that makes you so mad. But you want to know something? Can't put your hands on son. I learned that. You can't put your hands on. You ain't who you no no. Because what ha, what we're, we're, how, what he what he respects the most is love, and that's the facts. No one ever loved me. As look at and look what happened to me. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? PK was the only. Only motherfucker, they were, you know, my, my, I have my grandfather, you know, I got my mom, I know she loves me, you know what I'm saying? I know my brother Harry loves me, but you understand, what I'm saying? you know what I'm talking about? Well, yeah, showing you love. It's one thing yeah. loving you, it's another thing showing that love, right? Yeah. 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 So that's what I, that's what I, that's what I try to do. That's what I try to do. I just try, I just don't want no problems. I just want to do the right thing. I just want that to be the past because it is the past. And I'm I'm perfectly healthy. I'm perfectly healthy. I'm I believe this is me. This is just how I feel. I believe I'm healthy enough. I, I mean, I have, you know, I, you know, everybody. You're older, so of course you have problems you need. I've been running my whole life. I've been hitting the bag my whole life. You know, and of course you got problems like that. You're gonna have problems like that. I got 100 amateur fights. You're going to have problems like that. You, you know what I'm saying? 52 professional fights. I've been in the gym my whole life. That's the only thing I am. But I think I'm, I'm out there enough to do an exhibition. I wouldn't really want to do an exhibition with anybody but Floyd just because that's like a dream come true. I, was, I just would like to see how I would do since he's doing exhibitions. I mean, just to see how many, well, I don't know, just to see. And you know what I mean? It's what it is. 
Hey, when we talk about the fights and your mileage and stuff, are you conscious about stuff about CTE and that kind of stuff, you know, which is the stuff with the concussion crisis in the American football and head trauma and exposure mm -hmm. over time and stuff like short-term memory loss and slurred speech yeah. and that. Obviously, I can see how you speak. You speak fine, right? Like I can yeah. hear the Italian, I can hear the East Coast of you in you. But do you have concerns over the amount of damage you've taken over the years? I mean, no, no, no question. Definitely. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, but it's getting older, but it, you know, the damage I, I, I've been, I've been in a lot, I sparred up tons and tons and tons of punches got hit. I understand all that, but, but let me, my, listen, but what about, forget about that. It's the way I lived outside the ring for so many years. That's where the real problem lies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Anyone who's overdosed once is playing with fire, let alone someone who's done it several times, four times. And that's even old before the... How many times do you think you blacked out with alcohol? Oh, man. Blacked out? Yeah. I'm a blackout artist. That's... A, that's a, uh, uh, <laughs> call me blackout, dude. A couple of drinks, I'm black. It's already booked. I'm booked. You know what I mean? So it's it, it, it's it's like playing with fire. That's what it is. So you won't remember this, Paul, but back in the day, right, me and I think Mike had hooked up me and you to do an interview in uh, Pittsburgh. And I was on the buses at the time. I was traveling around America on Greyhound buses and we arranged to meet. And I got to Pittsburgh one, one morning and uh, I called you up and you're like, oh man, I'm moving house with a friend now. Sorry, I'm not going to come to Pittsburgh. <laughs> I'm not going to come and see you. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. So I went on the bus and I went and saw Buster Douglas in Ohio, I think it was. So we were due to, to do an interview and then you, you were moving house that day. Um, but you, when you talk about Pittsburgh, my, I was there like a fleeting moment. So obviously I saw there's a lot of hills there, right? And I, you can see the industry yeah. and stuff and that. So it doesn't look like it's a place where it would have like too many bad neighborhoods when you just go through it. And then, but like from what you said, man, it's just, I suppose everywhere has got them, right? I mean, I, I, everywhere I think. I think there's three school shootings you know I mean? in McKees Rocks. And, and, last year. and you, if you look up McKees Rocks, I think it's the worst. It, it's like yeah, the worst. Like uh, number one, number one worst in, in Pennsylvania. Worst. Jeez, man. But hey, Trump I can't. But hey, you, you've more than made up for not showing up that day today, man, because that the stuff you told me, I'm man, has just blown me away, man. I mean, I don't really know what I can say. Like, you want to come most... out here, you can come out here. I promise he'll be here. <laughs> I would love to. Yeah, I'd love to. I mean, I, I kind of regularly come out to Vegas, so I would love to hook up with you guys for sure. And um, how you how you haven't found your way onto Netflix yet, I don't know, but you will do, I'm sure, because it's a hell of a story and it, and it needs to be told. And Man, I just wish you every success moving forward. So let me ask you this. I suppose you're going to be a little bit biased, but is Gino a good kid? Great kid. That's that. See that. That's it right there. He's a great kid. Like he's not a kid that's in the trouble. He's not a kid that is involved with alcohol. He's not involved with drugs. He's not involved with his his friends. I mean, they play places. We're in a play. We're in a. We're in a neighborhood, these houses are $500,000. You know what I mean? Or higher. I mean, that's a lot of money. So yeah. I, 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 I think that the people that are grow, grow up like that, that they're, they're more so, they, it's different than being in a, everybody's on section eight. Hey, so, you know I mean? um, so the way that you, I, you address that um, question, right, just leads me to think that the way that, and how proud you sound of him makes me think that he just, you feel that he deserves the best version of you, right? Is that, that's yeah. where I'm coming from? Yeah, that's a hundred percent, hundred percent. If I can't give him the best version of you, I would like for you to fly out, take me in the backyard and shoot me in the back of the head. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna do that, but I, hey, I will come out. I will come out and um, I'd love to spend some time with you guys for sure. I mean, this it's funny because I've, I've covered your career. So obviously I've seen all the stuff that we've talked about and I've seen the headlines and stuff, but to obviously it's very different if you get the opportunity to explain it, right? And to talk about it. Yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, it's something that people like me will never be able to relate to. Um, 
fortunately, you know, in some ways, obviously I would never want to relate to the trauma of your childhood and I would never understand the pitfalls of fame and celebrity and quick money, you know, that just appears overnight. Like, how do you deal with that? Particularly overnight. when it's the complete opposite of what you've ever had. Yeah, overnight. And I just wasn't ready for it, I guess. I just wasn't ready. But you know what? It is what it is. It's over with. It's done with. Now I'm moving. Now I'm going to move on and just work with my son, work, help help out any, you know what I mean? Work with, hopefully I can get some good, now you know you're develop, develop, develop good fighters. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm looking forward to it. Well, hey, man, I know we swapped okay, some messages. Know, yeah, go on. Real quick. It's to, right now. I look at myself. I'm like, I'm a, I'm a, um, experienced. I'm a, I look my, as a trainer, as a trainer. So I gotta say, I'm, I can't say you're this and you're that. No, you gotta prove that. Just like I did when I was a boxer. I'm four round fighter now. I'm just coming up. I'm just coming up. I'm, I'm just coming up. You know what I mean? And I'm willing to work my ass off like I did to become a champion. I'm willing to do that for another human being. You know what I mean? And give what I know to him. And and that's it, and that's it. I mean, it's just a better, it's just a, it's just a better, it's it's a better way for for uh, me to 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 get. I don't know if you know if you. Yeah, I'm I'm on, I don't, I, religion and all that, but you know, have you ever heard of purgatory? Yes, yeah, of course. I'm trying to get to purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's the one where you don't know where you're going, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be all right with that. And the yeah. more you give back, the more you give, the more you give back, the more you give your heart and soul and be who you are. You know what I mean? Your passion and what you love and everything. And I think everything will be all right. I think it's gonna be all right. I feel like you're more aligned with your purpose. Yeah, yeah man. That's so good. And hey, I'm really pleased that we're in touch, like on social media and stuff. And I very much hope we continue that into the future man i wish you nothing but but good things thanks a lot i appreciate for me to have me on air guys thank you so much what's that i'm sorry for that pittsburgh and probably i was probably doing the i was probably doing the yeah yeah. maybe man hey we 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 move on and hey you more than got it back today so thank you so much i'm grateful thank you very much guys my man take care